Hey, how you guys doing? I just want to uh, have a, a brief conversation about SummerSlam. Um, for starters, I can't really recall a SummerSlam that I personally enjoyed watching more than uh, this SummerSlam. Um, I, I found it to be very entertaining from start to finish. Uh, so many good matches. Uh, a big sleeper great match to me was the Alberto Del Rio versus Christian match. That match was fantastic. I mean, I I'm never been the kind of guy that like gets up, you know, and stands on my feet and like really gets into Christian matches, even when he was Christian Cage in TNA. But that match to me is my personal favorite match I've ever seen Christian in. You know, usually when I see Del Rio, I usually try to hit that fast forward or. Or a Christian, I usually hit that fast forward unless he's on the mic because I love when he's on the mic. But I, I never really enjoy him in the ring. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, flat out, that match was fantastic. I enjoyed every minute of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Christian versus Del Rio. I wouldn't mind seeing those two guys go again. i like to see Christian have one more match at that title because I really per personally really enjoyed that. Now, the CM Punk-Brock Lesnar match... Um, very, uh, I'm not exactly surprised on how it went. I, I figured I was talking to some people and I told them I think that uh, Lesnar will go over Punk in the match, but I think Lesnar, but Punk will get some justice and get his hands on Heyman, so it's kind of a win win. And the way they did that is typical Brock Lesnar match style where the guy he's facing seems like you know he should have won, but he doesn't. Uh, Lesnar has to have help, typical heel bully, uh, but. I, I really, that match was great too, I mean, it, it was just, it was good, um, you know, the whole steel chair with the F5 on the chair and stuff was a great way to finish the match, so my hat's off to both of you guys for that match, that match was really good, Punk and Lesnar, great, great match, it really, it really was, um, and I like, uh, I like how Lesnar finally has his Brock Lesnar symbol on his ring gear again, you know, like he used to, but so that's, that's pretty cool. Now, um, on to... The uh, main event. Well, actually, before we get to the main event, the only match I personally did not like that match or that much was uh, the the starting match, the Kane versus Bray Wyatt. And I'll tell you why. Um, Infernal matches always someone caught on fire, and that's how they lost. In this one, it was just a pinfall after being jumped. Um, the best part of the whole match to me was was how it ended and. Uh, and not not how it ended, but when it ended, uh, the, the lights go out for Bray Wyatt, so he, you know he lights up his lantern, right? Then the lights go out, and all the fans start marking out and going crazy, thinking it's Undertaker for a brief second, and they all go, oh, you know, and and it's and they all you know seem pretty stupid, like oh, oh, you know, and and it pretty much mocks the whole crowd. And to me, that part was the funniest thing. So if you guys don't remember that or didn't notice that, rewind it right after your king gets hit with the steps. Watch that and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's hilarious. Now on to the main event. Um, I knew Triple H was going to play some part. I really like how he came out to King King's theme. We haven't seen him come out to that song in a while. Now, um, we knew Triple H was going to play some type of part in the actual show and some type of you know some type of part in the outcome in some way. But as far as the one-on-one -on -one match goes, he, you know, clean, clean, fair ref. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, that aspect that it was a clean finish in the match went back and forth over and over the only downside of that whole match was typical Cena fashion I could hear him calling the moves like you could hear for example you can hear Cena say go for the headbutt and I'll catch you and then sure, sure enough he goes up he goes for the headbutt and he catches him Cena really needs to work on calling his moves because that's something that that he's always been really bad at I don't there's certain people like Undertaker and Punk you can never hear them calling their moves, but when it comes to John Cena, he's always got a habit of, he just comes over the mic, I mean, I do watch the show in 7.1 7 surround sound, and sometimes I put headsets on my receiver and I can watch it with my headset on, and and I mean, that might also add to the effect, but if the commentators are quiet just for a second, you can hear him, you can hear him calling his moves, and that's something, that's like the biggest downside of John Cena, in my opinion, he needs to really work on that. Um, secondly, uh, the elbow thing was not as much of a factor as I thought it was going to be. I thought that they were going to exploit the elbow to the point where Cena would you know, maybe you know, have to tap out due to his elbow or something. Um, even though it's him tapping out is way more shocking than getting clean pin. But um, it, was, it was a great match. The finish of that match, though, was kind of crazy. I did not see that coming. You know, the, the way it ended, just, just a high knee to the head. 
one, two, three. I, I thought it was going to be a two. I was barely even paying attention for a second. I was looking down at my phone. I was like, what the heck just happened? He got pinned off that. So, I mean, that was really, really shocking and actually refreshing to have something new like that happen, something that you don't expect. Now, um, I knew, I looked at it at the time, and I seen that there was like five or six minutes left of the event, at, at, at least, after the celebration. And I, I knew Triple H was going to do a pedigree on him. I just, I knew, I knew it was coming. I just didn't know when it was coming. I thought he was going to hold his hand up and then pedigree him. And then here comes Orton. And sure enough, you see Triple H get behind him, pedigree. Orton comes out, one, two, three. I loved every second of it. It reminds me of Evolution. Um, great event. Daniel Bryan's definitely in the title picture again. Um, I don't know what's going to happen tonight on Raw, but all we need to know is that Evolution has passed Daniel Bryan by, and I'm loving every second of it. Thank you guys a lot.